He said, should the man pay all the bills? And then we got a little forward slash there. Um, if he moves into your home, does he come with a security deposit? Should he come with a security deposit? Well, you're a married man, so do you want to start? Because, you know, part of this is like, would not pertain to a married person, of course. Because if a man is moving, well, I guess it could actually, if, if you're moving into the home that the woman has already had, depending on the circumstances, so... Okay. Well, let's let's keep it let's keep it honest across the board. You know, what I'm saying yes, I'm married, ladies and gentlemen, but I wasn't always married, so I right. dated a lot before I got married. And to my fellows out there, I'm gonna give you the rule up front: don't ever move into a woman's house unless your name is on the lease. Mm. Point blank. Period. Now, we'll get into this topic, but that's the disclaimer I want to give you before we get into this. <laughs> that's the advice you're giving to the women. Can I give the women advice? Women. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Don't let that joker move into your house if he ain't coming with no security deposit. <laughs> Shoot. Because before you could move into that house, let me tell you something you had to do. You had to pay a security deposit. Your name, fellas, your name needs to be on that lease. Absolutely. And then that gives you the right. I feel like that goes that goes hand to hand. Like, you know, to feel like, oh, you're going to put my name on this lease because I'm going to start contributing to bills. But you didn't establish this. You didn't help with the establishment of this, um, of where we are and what, you know, what I've already built. So what are you coming with to, you know, make me feel like you need to have your name on the lease? I agree. 100%. So, whew, should a man pay all the bills if he moves in? Okay, so we're going to play this game today. So, okay, let's say, fellas and ladies, so a guy decides to move in with you, and he decides he, he's going to give you his deposit. So, I would assume either, would this be either from the beginning stages, or is this like you're, you're already in your house already, and you've been living for a time, and then he want to move in with you? No, I mean, if you guys are moving in together, I feel like both of you guys come up with whatever, you know, you guys agree in terms of security, deposit, or whatever, you know, okay. the house initially needs. Here's what we see a lot of. When you say men moving into the home, and this is why we say security deposit, we're not necessarily just talking about that month and a half first rent and security. More mm -hmm. or less, like, what does it take? When you first move into a house, don't you got to put furniture in it? Don't you need a refrigerator and a stove? You know, all of these things go into it and it's not accounted for when these situations happen. You know, the comfort level is already there, so you're not even paying attention to the fact that you're not providing, you haven't provided anything as of yet. Okay. I'll, as of yet. That makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, I'll look, so I'm going be real. So, once again, fellas, if you're going to move in with the lady and you decide you are I'll say, maybe, so let's go back a little bit. I understand some men or women, depending on the situation. Well, it's men. So the question is towards the men. So, fellas, if you have to move into a woman's house and they, and you couldn't get your name on the lease because your credit wasn't was where it's supposed to be. Now, ladies, that's a red flag. Yes, but sir. for some reason, so, so, so if it's credit, so long story short, if you can't get your name on the actual lease, I'll say what you should do is sit down as two adults and sign a contract saying that, hey, I'm just as responsible as if you're responsible living in this apartment or house, whatever it may be at that time. Okay? That's very important. Very, it, it's, it's, you know, that's, that's going to come with the balance and respect and everything there. But that's very yeah, key to that, do that. that comes, you, just what you're saying alone definitely sets a different tone than I'm moving in your house. That kind of even changes that dynamic. Like, I don't feel like you're moving in my house. More as though I feel like it's now we're about to cohabitat. You know, there's a little facts. difference. Yes. Yes. Right. So, yeah, it's not just your house, it's our house. <laughs> yes, yes. And I think that's to be noted because let's just say, for instance, the female is already established. This has always been the thing for me, right? I had my own place since I was 18. Well, I've been at my, mm -hmm. house, my parents' house since 18. By 19, I had my own apartment and I've always established my own and had my own sense. Now, I'm not saying that in a boasting way. I'm just saying that that's just been what it's been because when I moved out of my parents' home, 
I didn't have a relationship. I wasn't married. I was just an adult. And I feel like this one point, right? what I'm about to say, needs to be mentioned more often as we change the narrative as we do. Adulting is genderless, right? You're an right. adult. You have to do what adults do. And that is to take care of yourself. I don't agree with this whole... Um, I don't even know what they'd be saying, but an adult is an adult, daggone it. If you were by yourself, you have to, if you're going to pay rent or own a home or a roommate, whatever it is, you still have a certain degree of you taking care of yourself. That is correct. So, and that's going to... Go ahead. Go ahead. And I was going to say... Right, no, I'm with you. I I just want to say that little part you said right there is going to go to another conversation prior later on in this conversation, but you'll know when I when I bring it back up. <laughs> right, 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 so, right. All right, so once again, yes. So those that's number one and number two and number three we uncovered already. So the other part of the question is that uh, should he pay all the bills? Now that's going to be a little slippery slope, in my opinion, mm-hmm. because. It depends. What type of relationship is this? Am I just shacking up with you just for a little bit of time frame? Or are we in a real deal committed relationship that's potentially going to end to marriage or something else? You understand what I'm saying? Like I say this all the time. You should date with a purpose. If you move with someone in your house and y'all living together, there should be a purpose together. Not just, oh, I'm saving money and we're just doing our thing. No. No roommates. But what if they dating with a purpose and that is their purpose? You know what I mean? They ch- Look, it's easier for us to pay for, and I'm just playing devil's advocate, I guess, in a sense, at this point. Hey, listen, we paying separate rents. Let's just say they're both responsible adults already. That's not always the case if you're talking about a man coming to live with a woman. Um, but let's just say they're both responsible adults. We're paying this separate rent. Let's go ahead and establish life together. What okay, is, let's no, let's talk about the pros and cons of that because we already know that the statistics are going to show that nine times out of ten, they will not become that couple, they will not become that married couple that is what our culture is in dire need for. Unfortunately, that's just the truth. So, we're all about changing the narrative, which we are. How do we communicate to them why this is an unhealthy choice if that's what it is? Okay, I'm with you. So, um, I'm speaking on experience as well. So, um, I was raised not to move to a woman's house unless my name is on the lease. So, we already established that. So, I did do the one time, though. I did go get the green one time, okay? And the funny thing is, I did it with my now future wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it worked out, right? But, mm-hmm. so, so um, based, like I said, on our conversation, it was already... We already had an established plan. Is it going to be long term? And this is what it is, right? So when it came to the bills, um, in most cases, um, it was still kind of like 50-50. But the point that I made more money, it was more like 70, 30, 80, 20. So I still paid majority of the bills, mm-hmm. you know, because she was working. I mean, at that time, neither one had kids. So. We was making great money as two single young adults with good good jobs. So money wasn't a real issue because we was making great money and we was saving. We had a plan. Mm-hmm. Um, now, for me, it didn't turn to I pay all the bills until I had kids. And that was a different story. But right. in most cases, um, I mean, if, if, both, if both two people were together and do you know what I mean? See, I guess kids play a factor in this, too. Because a lot mm-hmm. of our young people who move with each other have kids. And that plays a huge role. In my situation, it worked out because it was two single individuals with no kids. So me paying majority of the bill wasn't a big deal. Right. Right. Okay. So let's get to the heat of it, right? Okay. Uh, let's do situations. No level, but I think in some cases we are exceptions, right? So let's talk about it where people can really relate. Here's the situation. You're a single man. Right, you don't have any children. You're dating a woman who has her own apartment, and you're coming from your mom's home. You're moving out of your parents' home, not your mom, but you're moving from your parents' home, and you're moving into this woman's home. 
Step number one, if that's the case, why would that be the case? I don't know. Whatever. If that's the case, are you coming with that prepared credit score? Or is it that you can't get your own place because you don't have that credit score? Second part of that is if you're coming, are you coming with the mindset to come established with a security deposit? What do we mean by security deposit? That means you already understand that these things are already established and you're entering in something that's established and i think that's what's not being respected when women don't put men on the lease and they want to be able to put them out when they feel like it because technically you're coming into something that i worked hard to establish and although when you get here it makes sense to pay part of the bills you're living here you got to pay bills wherever you go but why does that mean you get to now determine what goes on here as if you're the head or you establish this if that's not the case no, I understand. I mean, <laughs> this would go back to a lot of education and youth for the young, young, young boys. <laughs> I mean, the problem, the, the fact that a young man has to move into a woman's house because he can't get his own apartment is a huge problem. Mm-hmm. Because as men, as men, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be provider, leader, protector. If you're mm-hmm. a woman, ladies, if you're listening, if a man has to move into your house, that's not the man for you. Now, once again, this situation has happened. Yeah, I did it. But before I met my wife, she had her own apartment. I had my own apartment. I was still on the lease. So she got she moved, got her own spot. When my lease was up, I moved in with her. So that's how it works. So I, I always had my own. Was it because before, she had a better apartment? Was it because the, the place was bigger? Like, what made um, you guys decide for you to move in there versus her moving to your place? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Great question. Did well, you have um, furniture? Were you just one of them guys that just had a couch and a game and a TV? You know, did she have a whole dining room, living room situation going on? Yeah, we we, we had we both had everything in our homes. So once again, like I said, I, I had I had a big, I had everything. I had a little, you know, my 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 uh, man. I went for, listen before I moved to Atlanta. I had a whole duplex to myself. <laughs> So then when I moved to Atlanta, I had a one bedroom apartment and she had a one bedroom apartment. So, um, but then we move in, like I said, my lease was still going on. And then when she moved into her apartment, of course it was a bigger apartment and it was close to our job. So that, it made a lot more sense. So once I'm this up, I moved in with her and bigger, bigger place. And that was it. But as far as the bills, I still took on the bills because, you know, that's what men supposed to do. That makes sense. So with me? Yeah, understandable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Understandable. But here's one thing I think we're not even acknowledging. Is that you guys were already equal and equally yoked. I don't mean equal as yeah. you're equal mm-hmm. in terms of man, woman. But you guys were already equally yoked. We're not really. So what we're trying to do is change the narrative. Do people get to the equally yoked part? So here's an identifier for those that are listening, right? Because if this is not the case for you, this is not something that you're familiar with or you've seen. Here's where we take note, right? Okay, he said he had his own apartment and she had her own apartment. Well, if that's not the world you're living in, then you need to change something because if you have mm. an apartment and he doesn't, then you need to look at go look at that, right? So that's what we're doing. We're solution driven, by the way. We didn't yep. even do an intro, but I think we'll get there. Um, this is definitely solution driven discussion. And progression, and we are changing the narrative and positioning and posturing ourselves for a greater, right? So how do you do that? Well, if you know that it makes sense to be equally yoked, but based on what he's saying, I had everything I needed as an adult. I wasn't dependent on this woman. It did make sense for us to get together and move in together. But what that did was it created a space where we could be comfortable financially. Not anyone's on the system. Not hand to mouth, not begging. You know, we are financially comfortable, even if we're not fully financially free. And when, you know, we can get into what comfortable financial comfortability is versus financial freedom. Right. But, you know, that could be a topic for another day. But um, definitely, let's make note of the fact that you guys were equally yoked from the beginning. And I think a lot of times women try to fix situations. They try to, oh, I can help him. You know what I mean? I just wanted to be there for him or I love him. And I was a woman. I was that woman that thought, okay, you don't have your own place. 
You may not be working just yet, but I'll hold you down. You know what I mean? I'm going to hold you down because you're my friend. I love you. You know what I mean? So I've allowed a man, I mean, in my case, I've allowed more than one man. I was in long-term relationships on multiple times, like two times. So I've had 14 years in a relationship, 14 years in two relationships, seven years each, actually. So, okay, I allowed you to come and live in my house because I've always been on my own. So I already have a, a lease in my name. I already have PSNG we have in Jersey, PSNG in my name. Back in the day, it was MCI for the phone service. It was, um, you know what I mean? I have all of these things already established in my name. So why reinvent the wheel is kind of the thought process when you can just come here and then you can take on the responsibility. Well, here's the issue. The men that came along did not want to take on the responsibility. You want to come into something that's already established and you want to pay 50-50. But I'm looking at you like you crazy. Now, I didn't initially look that way because, like I said, I was that young woman, immature thinking. I'm going to hold him down. He's not working. So for a while, for years, you know, I'm taking care of the bills. Now, at one point in my life, I did have assistance. So I had some type of assistance. I felt like, why would I have you pay all the bills if I'm getting assistance? This should be this should benefit both of us, Right. That's right. Technically, you would be paying a larger rent if you didn't have this assistance at this time. So if we have this assistance. This really shouldn't be a problem for you to handle if you making that money and then my money can go to other things. Now, I've never been like that gold digger type. I've always given more than I've received. Um, and I'm not saying that boasting because I think in some ways that's hurt my situation more than helped it. But that's just how I was. Right. So, right. Um, yeah, now I understand like the respect of the establishment is not given. So if a young man is come along and he wants to move into your place and he doesn't have the mindset, forget the means, forget him having the means at the moment. If he doesn't have the mindset to come in securely, that means with that, that mentality, I'm going to take care of. I'm going to be responsible for. I'm going to provide. I'm going to protect. If he's not coming like that, why is he coming? Why are you allowing him to come? What is his purpose? What is he there for? Well, you already got it going on by yourself. And I think this is where we get into that independent, the origin we didn't really touch all the way on like I wanted to uh, yesterday. (laughs) Because the room got, you know. Right. It went the course it went. You know what I mean? But it's okay. Um, but this goes back into the origin of that independent woman. You get what I'm saying? No, I do. I do. Why do I need you if you're not going to do X, Y, Z? And then you get butchered for having that thought. Well, you know, you a gold digger. You are this, you are that. Wait a minute. I'm none of those things, but I respect my grind. I respect my own hustle. Even to the extent of going to get some type of assistance if and when it was needed. Because what we don't talk about when these women do go to some of these places to get assistance is they're disrespected. They got to wait in long lines. They got to hold their children sometimes standing in lines. You know, that's not an easy way to go either. And I'm not talking about the ignorant women that live off the system. I'm talking about a woman who's had some struggle because she's doing it alone and has needed systematic procedures for her you know to assist her in her journey it's not always looked at in a nice way period that is true 100 percent, 100 percent. no no argument there you know what i mean so if you are in a situation and a man is able to come your expectation is wait a minute i still grind it i still had to hustle i still had to build you know what i mean i remember my very first apartment I was a 19 year old and I was expecting my son. So I wasn't, um, I wasn't, um, my son hadn't been delivered yet, but I was 19. I lived in a studio apartment twin and the floors were painted. That's how crazy it was. Right. But you couldn't tell me nothing about my, I was in love with the fact that I had my own space. I set the tone. This is my space. I didn't care if it was four walls. Okay. I was just excited about the fact that I did not allow the fact that 
I came from a large family living in a studio apartment with all of them to hold me back. I was expecting a kid. I became I became full throttle devoted to being the best mom that I could be. That's where I was. I said, well, if I'm going to have this kid, I'm going to be the best mother that I can be. And what did that mean? Go ahead. No, finish your thought. What did that mean to you? What did that mean for me? That meant I had to prepare for my son. I wanted him to be born into a place where he had his own space. He wasn't sharing no space with no whole bunch of people. Because remember, that was my struggle. You know, I, I had always had to share. Um, he would have the necessary, the you know, necessities. He'd have his crib. He'd have his um, stroller, car seat, things that I've seen my siblings go without, you know, think, as at infant stages. So I just was like, you know, I want to make sure he has everything he needs to, you know, just be a healthy baby. Um, and that's what I started to grind for. You know, I was working two jobs. I was in school. I, I went and got assistance where I was eligible. But, you know, when you work, you're not eligible for certain assistance. So, you know, I could only get but so much help. But that was okay. I didn't let that discourage me. And I surely wasn't about to give up no job just to be on no assistance. So, you know, I went and got help where I could. And I took that help and I ran with it. And what I'm talking about is sometimes they had like furniture voucher things. So even if you're working, they'll give you a percentage where you can go and get a discount on furniture and things like that. Or they'll, you know, if you're working, you may not be able to get that rental assistance for the year or however it works, but they'll give you some assistance towards your first month rent or security. So I did. Whatever I was eligible for, (laughs) I applied for. I waited in the lines. I sat in those offices. I dealt with those attitudes that these people will have. I did it all because my goal was to make sure that I had what I needed for my son. That was it. I didn't care about how nobody felt about me. I didn't care about how nobody treated me. I didn't go to, I didn't even, it, it was no war. People would have nasty attitudes. I, okay, I'm here for a purpose. Did you get the information needed? Did I supply everything? When can I hear back from you? When, when should I expect to hear back from you? Okay, what am I eligible for? What am I, oh, that's it. And I'm out. And that's how I had to maneuver. But after doing all of that, I definitely did have a man live with me. And I didn't respect the grind myself. I didn't respect all of what I went through to establish that where somebody could even have a room to come and live with me. So I didn't have requirements of security deposit and the mindset that we're talking about now so we can continue to help our people. You know what I mean? I didn't have that. And I didn't have anyone around like myself and you to say, hey, that's an unequal yoke. He should be established already. You know, if he out here, he got $500 in his pocket all the time. Why don't he have a place? Mm, that's real right home? there. You know, and that was the mindset of the young guys out here. They were hustlers. They wanted to have money on hand. You know, my my kid's father would buy me all types of stuff. I love tricolor gold. And he would. He would buy me tricolor gold. I had BCBG shoes. You know what I mean? Nice things, but irresponsible. If this bracelet means that our rent not going to be paid. I prefer the rent being paid. Okay? If this sh- this shawl you about to buy me from Neiman and Marcus means that you're not going to have the light bill money because you need to have $500 sitting in your pocket, I need the light bill paid. I need you to get out of the mindset of keeping $500 in your pocket and understand it's better to invest that money into something that's going to produce more money. I agree. 100% everything you're saying. I just want to pull back a little bit layers here for a second. So, mm-hmm. you know, with the, with the whole having your own place, to be honest, as all men and all women, especially at young ages, should definitely have their own place. Uh, for me, as when, when I was a you know young teenager, and you know getting close to that, getting close towards the age of eighteen, I actually had a lot of fear of being out on my own in the world, have my own place. I didn't think I like mentally. I'm like, man, I don't know, I don't know if I can do this. Get a job and work, 
Like, I really didn't think I could do it, right? Don't know why, but that's what I thought at a younger age. Right. But anyway, when I moved out, when I moved out and got my own, my own, my own apartment, it was a duplex. I mean, I had, I had a garage, I had a front, I had a garage, I had a front porch, I had a deck, I had all that, my own little space. And the, 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 the accomplishment to say I got my own place meant so much more to me. Like, you know, you get that feeling once you graduate from yes. high school or college. Like, yeah, I did it. I did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, yes. Like, I mean, I did. And mind you, I did both. I did. I got my high school and college degree. But those are great accomplishments. But I'm saying, when I got my own place, my own apartment with my own mail come to, and I paid the bills and all that stuff, that was a huge accomplishment. And I felt like I was a king of the world because it, it, it was a lot to me. You know, credit got passed the first month, last month, and then rent, and gas, electric, water, everything you name. Now you, now you feel like you're a true adult because now mm-hmm. you have to your responsibility. So that's where I was at with it. So when it, when it did come for somebody moving in, which no one moved into me not for a long, long time, coming to Atlanta. <laughs> right. It, it, I mean, people come and say, hang out and chill, cool. But moving in, um, if I did move someone in, once again, it had to be on terms of long, long and, and uh, what's the end goal, and you know, pri- you know, responsibility. I mean, me, I look at myself as a man, man. Regardless if I was not married to a girl or not, I still was always going to pay the bills because regardless <laughs> what may be, I'm always, I mean, as a man, I'm speaking for a man. As a man, the reason I pay my bills or pay all the bills or whatever, because even if I live by myself, I still mm-hmm. got to pay my bills. I'm still going to have a house. I'm still going to have an apartment. I'm still going to have whatever. I'm still going to have gas, water, electric. So why wouldn't I pay those things if I'm moving with a woman? Right? Mm-hmm. And so, yes. Yes, the house, the apartments in her name, I'm moving with her. But if y'all have a good relationship and she's working, guess what? Yeah, you take on the, most of the uh, bill responsibility. But at the same time, the money she makes, y'all should have a, a thing going on where the money's being saved. Now, if right. I'm not being saved... What are y'all doing? Like, what's the end goal? That's the problem right. I have. What's, what is your purpose? Right. <laughs> like, are you planning to purchase a home? Are mm-hmm. you guys working toward what? And if, some, you know, not everyone wants to purchase a home, I realize as well, which is strange to me. That's always been the goal of my, home, of, of, my, my, of my mind. Like, you know how girls dream of marriage and they're Prince Charming? Yeah. That wasn't no me. No house. I always wanted my own home. That was a dream goal. You know what I mean? Like, I want to own my own home. Even to the extent where I feel like part of me now that I do believe in marriage, I still want to purchase my own home on my own first as a goal, even if we buy together. And that's just, at that point, that becomes our, um, a property that we rent out. You know what I mean? It's just something that's a goal of mine that I really desire that. So that's what I'm preparing right. myself for. Whether I get married right. prior to or after, I want to own a home. And like I said, once I'm married, you know, this happens in the next six months. Like, I'm planning for it to happen where I own my own home. You know, in the next six months, say I'm not married in the next six months. Even though, you know, we talk to people and they said it could happen that quick. Well, yeah. if it does, if it doesn't, in the next six months, if I own my own home, again, if I get married, that can be a property. You would be investment property. And in the, in the, but also this, I'll say this too. You know, in in, in that scenario, in your situation, right? So, mm-hmm. in the next six months, you're gonna buy a house, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not married yet, but now you have a house, you have your family, you have your business, X, Y, Z. To be honest with you, I'm speaking to you as a father, mm-hmm. as if you were my daughter. Mm-hmm. If you talk to a man, this man either needs to have his own place. Mm-hmm. Me and his own house to be on the same level as you, because mm-hmm. I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, it's not to sound mean, but you were too hard mm-hmm. to do everything you you put in the work in just to have some easy dude slide up in there and reap the benefits of the hard work that you did. As a right. man, you as a man, I would feel some type of way to move on with a woman, and and I bring nothing to the table besides you know contributing, hard, you know, contributing to the bill. To the bills, no, you have a mortgage, and honestly, at even given moment, he can leave, and guess who's still stuck with the mortgage? You, right? And we don't talk about that twin. We only we only talk about it on the side of oh, make like you said, make sure you're in the lease so that way she can't kick you out. 
But what about the fear for the women that allow these men to come in, put them on the lease, and then what if he decide to, like, you know, skip on the bills or not really do what he's supposed to do? Now, that's a, I mean, of course, there's always a risk in anything that you do, right? There's always a risk. But, I mean, that I means a risk, right? The person, you got him on the lease, right? You expect him to pay X, Y, Z, he don't pay it. Or he just leaves you and skip out, and guess what? You get evicted. Then you gotta take him but, to court, right? You gotta get into the court. But at the end of the day, but guess what? If both your names is on it, it's mm-hmm. still going to impact his credit. I don't care what it is; it's going to impact but his it's credit. Only so it's going to affect his credit if I allow it to. Here's what I learned, right? Then Go I ahead. To, uh, this is with my first relationship. So when my kid's father, we both were on the list, lease, and that's why I said I'd never do it again if I did allow another man to live with me. He's not just going to go on my lease unless he contribute to everything. Because if this with security deposits, if you live in an apartment, if anything goes wrong, they're looking for that to be taken care of out of the security deposit. Now, if I right. press my behind to come up with a whole month's rent and I'm not living in apartments or places that's like, a hundred, you know, cheap. Not, right. My current rent is a mortgage right now. My current rent is twenty one hundred dollars. And I'm not saying that to boast. I live where I want to live. Exactly. Where I can afford to live. But I love the fact that my son is on the first floor with his own room and bathroom. My daughter has her own bathroom on the second floor. We got the living room, the dining room, a kitchen, you know, a pantry, a garage. I have my own bathroom and my room. So there are certain things I require. But remember, ownership was always on my mind. So even when I went for apartment hunting, I always thought like home. So it was never like, oh, I just need an apartment. I always wanted something that was like home. Dining room and kitchen was always a requirement. You know, some people don't care, but that was always like a requirement for me. So, you like you said, I'm gonna bust my behind and hustle up the money for the cir- first month's rent and the security deposit plus first month rent. Security by itself is a month and a half rent, right? Let's do the calculation. That's twenty one hundred dollars for rent plus a month and a half rent. It had to be paid up. We over three thousand dollars that got to be paid up just for me to get in there. And also, let's factor in that you know your electric bills can be prorated, right? And you may need, and you may need to run a security. I mean, a credit check. You may need to deposit you, for gas, so, electric, water, good thing all those I things. I was coming with my own. You know, I already had bills established. I didn't have to pay any deposits or nothing. But I still had, like you said, it's a prorated bill. So from mm-hmm. when I came in, I still had a bill to pay. I had to pay. I have to pay water quarterly. <laughs> the water bill just went skyrocket because now we home so that's a 350 some odd dollar bill quarterly you know I'm looking mm-hmm. at all of this and I, no not to mention what about the furniture that gotta go in this house Right. how do I make now I have to pay all the bills and to my, where I am right now that's why I said my goal is still to own a home but I don't think I'd ever let another man come in especially if he don't have the mindset like I'm coming to already lift the weight. That means I'm coming with the first month rent and security. That means I get to relax at least for a month or two when you get here. Mm-hmm. Let me breathe a little bit now that a man is here. If I still got to hustle and I got to work, you know, 40 hours and you know what I mean, for a punk $50,000 salary here and then I'm, you know, side hustling over here so I can make another $11,000 on this thing and I'm trying to do this over here. My hands in so many different pots. I don't even get the chance to breathe. And you think I'm supposed to allow you to come in here and talk about you want to pay 50% of the rent? Right. No, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, as a man, and once again, we're talking about men, you don't, you, you don't, you don't want to have your woman or your wife have that type of burden when it comes to paying bills and paying, you know, being stressed out when it comes to paying bills or none of that. Like, for example, listen, my, uh, my wife's a full-time housewife, right? Whatever. When, mm-hmm. when I went through the whole process of buying this house, this shit was stressful as hell. Okay? Stressful. But guess what? That stress, she, didn't, she, she, she did not have to deal with none of that stress. None of the burdens were on her shoulder. She didn't even know how stressed out was to get all this taken care of X, Y, Z. You understand what I'm saying? And those right. those are the those are the responsibility of men are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So you saying so, like you didn't come home complaining like 
I'm sick of this. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sick of this, or I'm going to get this, or oh, I got to do this. I gotta, You know what I mean? I got to work extra hours. None of that stuff. It was just things were moving as normal. But right. on the back of my end, I'm back on the other end, I'm crunching numbers. Like, I got I to do this, got to move this around here. I got to, all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't know no credit, the whole process. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's yeah. something to note. Like you said, that's what a man is supposed to do. And I'll, I'll go a step further. And until you're married, <clears throat> that's what a person is supposed to do. Right. You know? Until you're married, you a human person, an adult, you need to be adulting. And I had to tell one of them, like, look, you're not, your money is not taking care of me at all. It's not going to my hair. It's not going to my nails. It's not going to any of my wardrobe. It's going to these bills where you lay your head. You lay your head here every night. The car you drive is mine, and you're not paying that. So if you don't understand that, now that I've come into this knowledge in terms of, and I'll be fair, there's some things I did tolerate because I didn't believe wholeheartedly in marriage. So it was no big deal to me. <laughs> like, all right, you mm. know, definitely when I felt like putting you out, I was going to put you out if that was the case. But my perception was off because I didn't have intentions on being this man's wife. And that's just being fair. You know, I'm not here to point the finger like I'm so perfect. No, I'm not perfect. Right, you know right. what I mean? That's not what I'm saying at all. I come with my flaws. You know, I'm a, I'm a strong-willed woman. <laughs> I have, I have, you know, things about me. You've talked to me a few times. So I'm sorry. I'm certain you can pick up on certain things like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not even off it like I'm perfect. None no. of us are. But I'm not, now that, like I said, once I came into the acknowledgement of, wait a minute, marriage is a beautiful thing. Regardless of the examples that I've had, this is what God has ordained. This is a covenant between me and God that he said, excuse me, that he said it's supposed to translation, transla transition into man and woman. And the man is supposed to love his woman like he, God, loves the church. That's Facts. unconditional. Oh, That's Jesus. overall covering. You I'm going to let that there because we're going to. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, what you say? No, I didn't want to change, change the topic, but go ahead, continue what you're saying because you know, the whole submission <laughs> thing. Because people don't uh -huh. understand the whole part. People don't understand the whole part. That's, that, that's why it all, it all matters when it comes to submit. Who Who's your husband or your man submitting to before you want to submit to him? Right. But go so ahead. Because I wasn't thinking husband. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't even really thinking long term. Although I always had long term relationships. Technically, I've been married right. twice. Common law marriage in some states. Yeah. yeah well, you know years. I mean. If you go by yeah, the years. Not... Yeah. But mentally, not at all. Emotionally, right. not at all. You know? But see, and, and I think with it, you know, because, you know, our, we, we're purpose driven. You know, we, we, come, we come to solution. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of these things will, a lot of these things could be avoided if we, if people were dating with a purpose. Mm hmm. Dating with a purpose. Simple as that. If you date with a purpose, you wouldn't fall in these situations because you would know who you're dealing with, and I think right. the problem. I think the problem with our, our our youth is that we all want to live our best lives. Yep. But then, we, but when you, but when, but living your best life is cool, but that that comes a high a high risk. At what you know cost? What I'm saying? Right. At what cost? It can cost you almost everything. It can cost you a lot of stress, a lot of trauma. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be real with it. Like, it's not it's not the best thing. And, right. and 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 some and yes, there's accountability to the man and the woman, but also it's also accountability to the man and woman's parents. It has to go back because you wouldn't know to keep yourself accountable if somebody told you everything about life and relationship and what you should be looking for in the man. Right. But those but those those conversations are not had, or if they do, if they are had. They're only giving, in, you know, appetizers. They ain't giving the full meat and potato. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> right, do right. this, do this, but not all this. And then we sit here right. sick. And, then, then we sit here yelling at each other talking about, oh, man ain't this, man ain't that, woman ain't this, woman on that. He need to do this, she need to do that. But it's like, 
we're stuck in this rat race because we don't, you know, it's it starts with our youth. To break this cycle, we have to educate our, our, our young generation about dating and relationships. But we got to teach them right. And this is why these conversations with each other, you know, although we may not fully change the minds of those of us who are already old, this old, we do need right. to keep engaging with each other because we're raising the kids, right? So that's true. If I was raising my kids to think that, oh, you don't need a, wo- a woman for my son and for my daughter, you don't need a man because of past traumas and hurt, or because, you know, technically, I am maintaining and sustaining a whole livelihood that's conducive to progression for them without that, that other part. Without being honest about it, though, and knowing that there's still there's a substantial void there. That not being married and not having a man in their life is a substantial void. It's not just a void. It's a, su- a substantial void. If I wasn't the woman, an uh, honest enough woman to be able to say that to my children and let them know like blank point blank period do not follow this okay i was misled tell the truth i tell my kids the truth i was misled i was misinformed i was i made missteps but i'm here to tell y'all that people need people yes i'm going to continue to hustle and to do everything that i can do to continue to provide you guys with a lifestyle that is comfortable but you want to you want to have a goal of freedom not just comfort and certainly not survival where your mom comes from see mom had to live a life of survival for so long that i didn't understand there was a life of comfort and a life of freedom so i'm just tapping into comfort when i get married i'm gonna live a life of freedom Mm. and that's how i see it survival mode is where a lot of our people are in and they don't right. even realize it. You are not living, honey. You are in survival mode. You are going, 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 going. I don't want to live a life in survival. And it's cool, you know, you get to a place of comfort where, you know, like I said before, that lifestyle I was living where I was here, there, everywhere. You know, that's too much. You know, that's way too much. I don't want to do that. So yeah. To and to go. A balance where we can live comfortable. Listen, I can't give you everything you want. But that's not my job as a mom. I'm not here to give you everything you want. That's not the requirement. You know what I mean? That's not the prerequisite. I'm here to give you what you need to nurture you, to cultivate you. And if I can establish, if I can give you some of your wants, then by all means, if your behavior lines up to your wants, then you will definitely get what I can provide for you. Absolutely. Right. And I want and to think about something. Said. Part two. Your behavior got to oh. add up to what you're saying you want. It does. I wanted to piggyback on something you said a little bit earlier. And okay. this is for my fellas. So, fellas out there, the men who are listening, young men, older men, whatever. Okay, I see Ron, Ron J is listening at the moment. So, let's just engage with Ron J. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I believe, and I believe, it is a disservice for males, men, to say that. Hey, I don't need a father. You don't need a man to raise a child because I was raised by one. Listen, we never said that a woman can't raise a man. It, it has happened. We've we, we seen it. We know it. Um, a single mother can't raise children, men or women by itself. We get that. But let's be honest. Let's be real. Is it right? Is that, is that, is that how it's supposed to be? Right. And the fact when, when men say that, or even when women say that, it grinds my gear. Like, okay, I know you can do it, but is it the right thing, though? Right. Let's call for what, what it is. How are you positioned and posture while you're doing it? Right? Like, I always tell people this. I said, listen, God doesn't make us, and everybody that knows this, I speak like if life is a believer, right? So God doesn't make us do things. Now, certain things we're going to do regardless, but he gives us a choice. You get to choose what position and posture you take it. And here's an example. Um, you can be this, you can be broken and, and depressed in it and still accomplish the goal that God has assigned for you to manage and, I mean, to, uh, minister to this poor soul over here or touch the heart of somebody else over here or speak life to somebody over there. But do you want to be doing that from a broken place or do you want to do that from a place where you're thriving? 
And that's how I look at it. I don't want to do things from a place and in a posture that is not conducive to freedom because that's what my goal is. My goal is freedom. And I don't mean freedom like to be independent or to be single. I mean freedom to be complete. That's with my counterpart. That's with my husband. That's with my children. You know, whether they grow up in the home, and this was a, this was a part a point that I wanted to make to something you said earlier, um, that traditionally, like in cultures, other cultures, their tradition is that the children do grow up in the home and they stay until adulthood, not 18. I know that's the adult for the state of New Jersey. And, okay. Um, but they stay until they marry off, excuse me. So for that male child, he stays in the home until he, unless he goes off to school, you know, where he, he stays in the home until he marries off. You said, you said, hold on, hold on. You said the man stays in the house until he married off? You cut out. Yeah, I'm saying that the kids, you know, in in other cultures, like Uh Jamaican, I can speak to that a little bit because my grandfather's Jamaican. Like the kids were not there; they weren't raised to. You have to be out when you turn eighteen. You know, it was you can live here as long as you want. You know, you lived under your parents' roof until you were in a relationship. You know, going off to be married. So yeah, that's a total different outlook than you know what I would tell my son. I've told my son all his life: when you turn eighteen, you gotta get out of my house. And that's the difference between the African American community and the white community. Like our parents, and you, know, you just said it. And yeah. My parents, like, oh, we eighteen, you getting out? Eighteen, you mm-hmm. getting out? Eighteen, getting out? But other races and religion, whatever, other, no, other races and other groups, they kids get to stay home, mm-hmm. work, save yeah. their money out, and then when they move out, they're ten times better than you know they're right. not starting from scratch. That's why I pointed it out because I was misled as well. I would tell my son at 18, you got to get out. But if I'm going to push you out at 18, this is what I decided. If I'm going to stick with that narrative, then that means everything that you need to be prepared, I need to prepare you. So if I haven't done my job, my due diligence and preparing, preparing you for the real, real world and what does that mean to me? Like I told my son, before you leave my house, you will have a driver's license. You will have a car. You will have established credit. You will see bills coming in your name. And everybody know most times you have to be 18 to, you know, get a bill to come in your name. So right. he's 17 right now. This is his grown man year in my house. I started sending him bills. Hey, you like Apple? You like these games? Every time you order a game, I send him a bill. That's an $18 bill. That's a $17 bill. That's a $10 bill. You know, You don't need to be overwhelmed when you see bills coming in your name. And that's what I noticed from some of these guys that I've dealt with. They see bills coming in name and they fold twin. I mean, they fold hard. <laughs> they fold hard. This is they hold on. Fold. I want to say his last thing, and we want to hit play on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, last thing I want to say is that now the only see the, the I think the true statement of of that family saying when you're 18 years old, you get out of my house. That's that statement comes to the point where yes, you have 18 year old men and women living in your house. But they're not doing nothing with their life. They and smoking, they drinking. You have accountability too. What did you? No, no, I get that. Because no, that's right, the I meat get that potatoes. Part. That's the yeah, you know that too. The meat and potatoes. But right, but I understand that. But listen, listen, that's where that that conversation falls in because if you have someone, because at that point, at that age, you're 18 years old, 16, whatever, you're an adult. You can choose what you want to do, right? Which is cool. But if you decide you want to do nothing, you gotta get out. The reason mm-hmm. why I say that, and you're right, it does fall on the parents. I, I right. speak from experience. I am mm-hmm. a twin. Mm-hmm. We got the same information at the same time. We were told A, B, and C. To execute. <laughs> exactly. We got the same information. Mm-hmm. I went, I worked, I did X, Y, Z. My brother, he did eventually, but he was still kind of on the laziness side. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter what the, I mean, the, the parents going with this too much. Accountability got to fall on the adult. But yes. at a certain point, my brother wasn't doing what he, my brother wasn't doing what he's supposed to do, and eventually he got kicked out the house. Right? I moved right. out because I want I want my own stuff because I got tired of her rules and I'm grown. <laughs> word, word. 
All right, let's go ahead and press I mean, to touch on what Twin Zink is saying, um, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Um, sometimes I struggle with with the thought of what's when someone says, like, well, that's not what's supposed to be done. Because I, I always, I find myself now thinking, like, well, who's to say that my thoughts are right, right? Like, like so if you believe in Jesus and I believe in, you know, Buddha or something like that, like, who... Who says that you're right and I'm wrong? Or, or with anything, though. Like, who's, who says that the person that thinks, you know, growing up with just a, a mother is fine and, and I think you need both parents? Who says I'm right and you're wrong? But but I do agree with you. I think you do need your father in your life because it's, it's very apparent to me when I speak to people, even people who hate their fathers, they still yearn for that love and they, there's like a hole in them. You know what I mean? So, so it's apparent that... You need that love, whether you're missing the father or the mother. Either way, you need both of those, the, the love from both of those people. Right? Yeah, he is, he is, he's fact. 100%. I think that's what says I'm, it. It's the fact. It's the statistics. It's the very fact that you can say, Ron J, that, okay, yes, I can, I can subscribe to that fully because I've, been, I've seen people desire that. Regardless if it's a mother's love or a father's love, you need both. And that's true. And that's true because I, I know a lot of, young men and young women who didn't have a father they yearn for him so much you know they didn't like him but they always wish they had him around and mm -hmm. that might be their own self mechanism to deflect it mm -hmm. so he's hitting on top of now you get the next play again all right i also found it interesting um what you were saying about you know you're not here to give your kids all they want you're here to give give them you know their needs and their nurture to nurture them um, and I always think, I think to the, the idea of like spoiling your kids, I always say this, like people like, well, oh, you, you, you can't spoil your kids. And this is just from my perspective. And I say, well, it, like who doesn't want to spoil their kids? If you don't, if you're not spoiling your kids, it's because you can't. And now not saying you, I'm just saying in general, now you want to make the excuse that, oh, 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 I wouldn't spoil my kids anyway. Like, no, I, 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 I happen to be doing very well and I can give my kids whatever they want. So they're going to get whatever they want, equivalent to the behavior, like you were saying. But like the people that, that that try to frown upon people that spoil their kids because they can't spoil their kids, I think it's ridiculous to me. But see, Ronjay, if you say equivalent, if you uh, you subscribe to that back end part and say equivalent to the behavior, then I don't think you're spoiling your children. I think you're giving them the benefit of life that is actually equivalent to you work hard, you play hard. You know what I mean? And I think that is a good balance. Good. I think spoiling the child is a disservice to them because then they are not accepting. They they don't receive rejection well. They don't like to be told no. Then they come in with this sense of entitlement. So even if I can provide my kids something, sometimes I tell them no, and I got it right there waiting for them for them to level up to it. My son wants the PS5, right? Now he mm -hmm. has the PS4. But he wants the PS5. But your health teacher just told me that you are borderline failing. Now you're he's there we a go. Mm -hmm. borderline failing. Okay, this PS5 I'm gonna sit right here in this closet. You don't even know it's here, and you won't know it's here until you level up. Now I could give it to you, but giving it to you is not gonna be a service to you. You know, it's not gonna help have you understand that you cannot go through this world just entitled because you because of what? Because I love you. Well, this love don't go past the door. The outside don't care about you. They don't even care about your name. You are a number when you go into this world. Your social security number, your student ID, you are a um what is insurance ID number. Everywhere you go, tell me what which one of these entities identify us by our name. That is true. That is true. What everything you're saying is true. And I feel where you come from too. Um, because as a parent, you, naturally, you want to do more. Naturally, you you want better for your kids. So what better, I had to grow yes. up, and, what I had to grow up and go through, my kids will never have to grow up and go through, right? right. My yeah. kid is spoiled. Sometimes I gotta sit them down, tell them they spoiled. Mm -hmm. But I'm with you, like, I, you know, I, I tell I'm with my you on kids that. too. You have to understand like, this is a privilege. You do you are tapped into privilege when you think about it, right? Like I just said, my 17 year old boy has his own room with his own bathroom. And when I was 17, twin, I lived in a studio apartment and I shared a bed with everybody's beds around my bed. 
Listen, I get it. And you probably had somebody used to pee the bed, so that I understand. <laughs> I ain't never wanted to pee in the bed with me. Oh, okay, okay. You, <laughs> no, I didn't okay, have that I, issue because I, I had that to issue. them out. We had but, the one cousin. But listen, but listen my kid is full cousin. as well. Listen, my kids, <laughs> listen, listen, my kids, they both got two flat screen TVs. One has a PS4 and one has an Xbox One in the mm-hmm. same room. Yeah, they spoiled. But mm-hmm. to be clear, like you were saying earlier, when they act up, or don't do what they're supposed to do coming to school. Mm-hmm. Oh, we, 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 we take stuff and we educate. I explained to them that you're privileged to have all this stuff. Right. Like you it's said, a privilege. my first game system was a hand me down Nintendo that my neighbors gave me. That was my I'm first game system. <laughs> my first game system was called an Odyssey. That's how old Go it back. was. Okay. It was an Odyssey. And I know, I'm going to go ahead and press play. I know y'all don't know what the Odyssey is. And I know I'm leaving a bunch of fucking comments here. I'm sorry. But um, I think no, the same not. thing applies to people kicking their kids out at 18 or whatever, right? Like, it's the comes to the whole spoil factor, right? Like, so, like, if I'm doing very, very well, let's say, I, you know, I make a million dollars a year. It's not a big deal for my kids to live in the house with me at 18. Like, the, the parents that are kicking their kids out the house at 18 is because they don't have their shit together, you know, quote, unquote, and they can't afford to have those kids in the house or, or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? Like, so like, if you're doing extremely well, why would I need to push my young out of the fucking, out of the house when they're not ready? For what? For what? For why? Let me help that motherfucking person to, to get where they need to go. Hey, Ron, hey, Ron we, hey, we love it. We, yeah, we love it. Please, yeah, no, you, you're not the problem. Keep, please, please keep it coming. It's all good. Yes, and to his point, which I think I touched on like maybe right before he might have recorded it was the initial yeah. thought and everyone is different that the kid has to leave before 18 or at 18 you got to get out at 18 I needed to leave my parents house I'm like I can't wait for 18 matter of fact I tried to leave at 17 and my mom calls the cops and said I had to come back but I think it's the dynamic and if we're not building healthy relationships with our children then we don't, they don't understand. And it's our job to prepare them for the real world. You are, uh, you are at fault and you are doing a disservice to your children or child. If you telling them by 18, you have to get out of my house and you haven't prepared them not one bit to get out of your house. They're going to go through a right. culture shock. And then they're going to be that same person that these young people are dealing with that cause hurt, damage, and the cycle continues. So what I had to do was I had to reframe my way of thinking because my way of thinking was I didn't want him to be an irresponsible young man that wanted to live with them you know how the mama's boys are that's what that's what I was around but I had to realize like wait a minute I need to prepare you for the real world and if you're not prepared that means you have to stay here and then to to echo that and to take it a step further the whole you have to get a job now you have to be a part of the provider. Okay, when my son is providing income to my household, right? That means he got some say. Just like any other man that lives in a house. I don't want you to have no say in my house. I want you to have say in your house. So like I told my son, listen, I know all your life you've been told you have to get out at 18. But that was for you to understand that that is a reality for a lot of men, a lot of people. What I need you to do is prepare yourself. You need to ha- get in that study guide to study your license. I've already taken, him, you know, taking them um, test driving, you know, so it's I'm doing what I'm saying. So I need you to do your part as well. Study the manual so you can have your license. And yeah, I will be the one to invest in his first car. I don't expect him to buy his first car, but I want him to have the ambition to and the means to. So what does that mean? Okay, well, I'm not just going to prepare you to drive and not prepare you to get the means to purchase a car. So every investment knowledge that I get, I give to my son. Every team that I'm on, my son is on that team. That's why I talk about the escort so he can be on payroll. You know what I mean? So it's it's a whole package. We can't give him a part of it and not the meat and potatoes. Go ahead, Twin. Right. And also to add to it as well. For the listeners, so the ladies and gentlemen who are raising kids, single, married, whatever, these are some of the things that your child should have at whatever age they leave your house, okay? Got you got, got to break it down to them. They should definitely have a checking account and saving account, and they should know how to balance a checkbook. They should know about credit. They should, should they drive a license. 
I think that's those, those probably the most important things they need to know before leaving the house to be successful. So at the age of 16, if not earlier than that, they should have those things established. So that's something to think about. So if you're pushing your kid out the house and he ain't got his license, he ain't got no credit, that's why he's moving to this girl's house and he can't be on the lease because he has, he, he has established nothing under your guidance. So as, as a parent, you're letting your kids down for the jump street and you're the right reason why that these young boys are moving in these girls' house and not bringing nothing to the table. The cycle's right there, ladies and gentlemen. It starts at home. And you can hit play. Okay, Am I I'm going to hit play. Oh, okay. Well, then you're not spoiling your kids. If what you're giving them has to balance out with their behavior, you are rewarding their behavior. So you're saying that if they Facts. do good, they get more. If they do bad, they get less. That's not spoiling. Spoiling is when you give regardless of behavior. That's facts. That's facts. What you're saying is exactly correct, right? Exactly correct. But the only problem is your kid probably doesn't get that concept and isn't going to get that concept the way you're teaching it, right? Like they'll 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 probably figure that out. Obviously, they're more than likely to figure that out the older they get. But you thinking that you're you're doing them some type of a huge service, like as a child. They're never going to get, it. he's never going to conceptualize, you know, the idea that you held that, that uh, PS5 from him for his own good so he can level up, right? Like, it's, 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 it's like a, nah, fuck you, mom. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, they don't really, they, they can't just conceptualize it, like, at certain ages. It just doesn't work that way. I want to hear the rest of this point. I know he had more. Yeah. Hey, uh, um, what's going on here? Um, <laughs> anyone got any green tea? Maybe some, like, class A marijuana? Maybe some... Yeah, get up out of here. <laughs> Yo, fam. What's up? What y'all got going on today? It's Tony the Tiger in the building, just, you know, breezing. I was just in a queue, and, um... It's hard to get good conversations now with these. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I, I, you know, I got out of there and now I'm just listening. I'm glad, though, I bumped into y'all. What y'all doing? What's up, Tom? Much love to Tony the Tiger. Right. Welcome, brother. Welcome. We're going to keep running through these real quick and then we'll get back into it. Right. Those are all material things. My son credit can be right. His ID could be right. His driver's license could be right. Guys, get these kids' mind right. They have to get these minds right. Let's stop raising employees. Let's start raising entrepreneurs. We should be worried about things at 18 that we are not worried about. You understand? We should be worried about things at 18 that a lot of the families, a lot of families are worried about. And we are not. We seem to be worried about the other things. Credit. Credit. Your child leave your house at 18, 19 years old with the right mindset. You already know that's the smallest. That's that's my noon. Hold on, hold on. Before you hear play. Before you hear play. Yeah, I wasn't about to hear so, play because I got a comment for that too. Go ahead. Okay. So, yeah, Romy, I'm with you 100%. So, as you see the topic is, we're talking about the real deal versus how you feel. And the conversation is if... Hold on, let me get the topic. Make sure I get it right. Hold on one second. The topic that we're speaking on today is... Should a man pay all the bills if he moves in your home? And should he come with a security deposit? So we're really trying to stick on the topic here because I understand exactly what you're saying. But let's be real out here. We have a lot of grown men that's moving to the woman's house and it's all nothing but madness. You're right. Men, we, we should be focused on other things. But right now, that's a different topic. But I just want to let you know. I agree with what you're saying, but this is the topic we're speaking on and we have to address this. And I'm not sure how much of the conversation you heard because we did address a lot of those things at the beginning of the conversation. But thank you for your comment, Romeo. Mm -hmm. Now, I agree to a certain extent because, I mean, just teaching a kid about credit and not understanding society and how it works, it's not credit, that's not even set up for us. But, I mean, in terms of just understanding, understanding it, yes, 
That's definitely a major piece because credit will take you farther than cash. We get that. Um, I'm talking from a whole page approach, the holistic approach, not just credit, not just license, but where are you going, you know, if you ain't got a means to get there, you know what I mean? So the holistic approach, your mindset needs to be prepared to take to adults. That's what we've been saying this entire time. So like Tom, um, like um, Twin said, not really sure how much of the conversation you got, but we're talking about the holistic approach. You need to be prepared. And it does not necessarily mean that you need to leave at 18. This is the narrative change that we're also talking about. Do you just tell your kid to get out at 18 and you haven't done your due diligence to prepare him or her for the for the real world? No. <laughs> um, to uh, Jay's point, you know, like, no. You know, if you can't afford it, then you, you shouldn't be pushing them out because you can't afford it either. We have to understand that these are our responsibilities. These kids... They're our responsibility until they are functional, until they're prepared to go out into this world alone. And they're reflections of us when they get out there. That's my take. I'm going to go ahead and press play if you don't have enough time. I mean, no, no, I'm good. Go ahead. Yeah, we're good. Hit play. Yeah, 100%, man. Um, at the end of the day, our, our behavior is all learned behavior, right? Like, if you start looking at, like, really successful people... And let's just take real estate, for example. A lot of people that own real estate, you ask them, well, why? how'd you get into real estate? And I'm just saying a lot. This is people that first generation and people real estate as well. But a lot of people say, well, my parents own real estate and they own houses. And, you know, that's what I saw. Or my parents owned a business when I was young and they ran a business. So, you know, that's what I know. You know what I mean? Like, so it's not it's not a far fetched concept for them. If they, that's what they see and know. And like you said, if your kids are moving out and, and they don't have the tools and you haven't shown them the tools and, and, and you haven't led by example, then you're right. They're going to end up living with some girl, not having the tool. And, and I, I truly think, you know, you failed as a parent if that's happening. And I don't want to say all the time, but a lot of times that's the case. Facts. You, I mean, it, we won't call a spade a spade. You fail as a parent. If you let your child Word. leave the house it, it, he's not prepare for the real world because let's be real this world we live in is a harsh world and for black people it's even worse so yes you have failed i will fail as a father if i let both my kids leave the house i'm prepared to deal with the real world go ahead agree i'm gonna push play because we got okay. a few in here we're gonna try to get to them so ron G, are you suggesting because a child doesn't understand something you shouldn't do it are you suggesting because a child is too young to understand why you do something that you should not do it? Not sure there. Wait, was he speaking? I think he was speaking to the other uh, made a comment. Um, okay. Ron Jay. So okay, just, I don't know if that's what his point was, though. But I'll let him, you know, he's still on. He's still following. So I'll let him go ahead and respond. Let's try to get through these other ones because I don't think yeah. that was what he was saying. Okay. Right. Well, it sounds like um, I understand. I, I came in late, but I understand what's going on here. Um, but you know what you just touched on, Twin, is the difference between African-Americans growing up and um, and everybody else. If you notice. Back. That's what we were saying. <laughs> when you watch TV. <laughs> You'll see white kids and they'll be home with their parents and all that with no rush. You know what I'm saying? No rush. I'm talking about get yourself together. I'm going to help you get a car. I'm going to help you get a job or you're going to go to school and all this stuff. Man, it ain't like that. It's like 18 <laughs> is the finish line when you're in the hood and they like, yeah. <laughs> now you got this, you know, it's showtime. I don't care if you're ready for it or, or, or whatever, but it's showtime. It's time for you to produce. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I get it. I'm gonna listen more. That way, I can respond more. But like, that's where I'm at with it. Tony, right? We that's on what that. we were saying. You, you're Tony. right. We, yeah. That's exactly what we're saying. We're saying that we have to change that narrative. Not saying that we have to subscribe to everything that these other cultures do. But if we look at the success rate of these other cultures, well, something ought to tell you the way you're doing it is a little off. And the and not just that, but why are we doing it this way? Well, we live in a society that definitely told us to push the men out the house anyway. Mm. Right? Back to the origin of the independent woman epidemic. So we, we're flawed. A lot of flaws in the way we've been thinking. That's why our mission is to change the narrative. If we haven't prepared our children to leave the nest, they don't need to leave. Who sends their kid? How are you going to tell me you love your kid and you send them out into the lion's den? 
with no preparation on how to handle a lion. You just sent them to be a meal. You just sent them to be consumed. So go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and press play. Yep. I, I agree with uh, Romeo Jr. Um, I, I think you should instill in your kids that anything is possible, right? And, you know, they can do anything. Like, I don't I don't really subscribe to the, you know, let's, let's raise them to, you know, be entrepreneurs or... Because the fact of the matter is, everybody can't be an entrepreneur. Like, the old That's saying... True you know, everybody can't be a chief. There's got to be some Indians. Like, somebody has to work. That's period. Somebody has to be an employee. That's just a fact. There's no possible way we could all be bosses. Impossible. So so the idea that everybody's saying, oh, no, we should all be entre- entrepreneurs and we should all start businesses, everybody's not cut out for that. I promise you that. Like, it, it just doesn't work that way, right? And, and the, the people that are, I encourage them to be. But there are people that are just suited to be workers, unfortunately. That's okay, so Ron J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron J., I'm with you 1,000% on that. All I think I would say, to add to that, um, just make sure you expose them to both so the, the child can have, or the, the teenager or adult can pick and choose what they want to do. So expose them to be entrepreneur, also expose them to work with somebody because it honestly, if I was exposed to entrepreneurship at an earlier age, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I, I was an entrepreneur a long time ago. But you, I agree with you one hundred percent. Everybody can't be a boss. I agree. I agree. And in terms of exposure, we know that we talked about that even with traveling. You know, they need to see that it's a big world and not just their five block radius. So the holistic approach includes that, and it's it's important to not, you know, shovel down their throats. Your your way of thinking and your way of your goals, etc. You know that projection thing is unif- It goes across the board, not just the negative stuff too. You can be you know over enthusiastic about a child doing what you want them to do and not looking and noting. Hey, let me observe my kid for a minute. You know what I mean? Let me. What I do with mine is I pour into them. They have their own vision. My daughter wants to do photography. Okay, baby girl, I don't know the first thing about photography. That ain't my field of expertise. She wants to do sneaker trading. Oh my gosh, I'm not even into that stuff at all. So what am I going to do? I connect my daughter to people that are into that. After I vet them, she's got connections to a girl in California that does sneaker trade so she can learn it. She can be, you know, encouraged by it. She know what to look for and not base it on my knowledge because I'm infinite in knowledge in that aspect. I don't know. And I don't have the time or the, the I don't have the liberty to just go in and and study it, you know what I mean? I'm in school to I'm in school for psychology. I can't go look up sneakers and Nikes. I'm not doing that. But it doesn't mean that my daughter doesn't need that push or that encouragement or that financial support to do what she wants to do. And she's only 13. So yeah, she has the entrepreneurial niche, you know, like her mom, which is great, but it's in a whole different type of field. So it just goes, we have to encourage them where they are. My son wants to do music and game design. Again, outside of my world. Well, what am I going to do? I have to connect you to those things that are going to benefit you still. It's still preparation. It's still development. And it's still cultivating. That's still that's what a, a parent's job is. It's not to make little miniature use. You know? So, t- Twin, if you don't got none, I'm going to go ahead and press play. Okay. Yeah, so my 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 behavior with my kids depends on how my kids behave in a lot of ways. So I do my part in teaching them the things that they need to be taught. I do my part in letting, making sure that they see me act in a way that I want them to act. Um, I'm stern, um, and I keep them focused, keep them occupied. Uh, when it comes to the privilege end side of it, anything they get is because they earned it. I've said it clean on the board in the room. This is what you need to do every day. This is what you shouldn't be doing. And at the end of the week, we're going to come back and see how you did. And that's how I reward my kids based on their actions and their actions only. When it comes to the man paying for everything and being in these women's house, I've been a man that had to live in a woman's house. Um, Nothing to disagree there. He, he, I'm with you 100%, sir. And I'm sure he's going to continue on the next voice note. I'm, try, I'm trying to see which one is the next voice note, which one, if I can find it. 
Hold on. Uh, just hit play because you, 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 you'll be you, – I don't want you I'll to exit to closing it. out. I'm going to leave you out with this. This is the last thing. Like, I think it's so powerful to, like I said, once again, I said this in the last comment, to instill in your kid that anything is possible, right? There was a woman, uh, Elizabeth something, a young white girl. She started a, a company. Um, it was a, a, a blood typing company. Um, she was the first U.S. Uh, uh, billionaire, woman, woman billionaire in, in America. She ended up going to uh, court and getting sued right now, actually. But the, the bottom line is she started the company at 19. It was worth billions by the time she was like 22 or 23. Um, the, the, the point is, I couldn't fathom how at 19 she decided she was going to drop out of college, pitch venture capitalists, start this fucking in humongous company. Like, I couldn't fathom how at 19 that you could even think that was possible. Like when most 18 and 19 year olds are just thinking about getting licenses, right? That's because she she was never told none of this was possible. Mm. Mm. And and she, she probably had good exposure. And yeah, yeah. Mm, let's keep listening. I've had to be a man that lived in a woman's house. And let me say this, it happens, especially me living in New York City. A lot of these programs is set up for the women. A lot of these apartment opportunities is set up for the women. And, you know, New York City rent is expensive. So now you're dealing with, you know, blackmail, having to put all this up for an apartment. So, yeah, it seems to be a lot of times you see men um, start their life off that way. Like 21, living in a girl's apartment, 22, 23. What I would say to those men is don't beat yourself up. Just make sure you have a plan and make sure you are pursuing that plan even as you go through it that way, even as you're living with your girl. Don't let what you're going through at 21 as a black man identify who you are. I agree. I mean, I mean, I agree to a certain extent. I think that a lot of these places we talked about this yesterday there are well let me just say this i totally disagree with the idea of um establishments being set up only for women and children i totally disagree with that i think that if you're going to be an assistance to a person just be an assistance to the person an adult is an adult people have to adult they have to take care of themselves so let me just lead by saying that I think that, but with with that, I do understand that a lot of these places are set up for women and children because women and children don't have the man in the house at the same time. Um, So I understand the way the system has manipulated us and has caused us to buy into this. I don't need a man, right? We talk, we keep talking about that same thing, but when it comes to the educating our children and the parental part of it, single parent homes or single moms are not preparing these young men. They're not around men that have the same um, mental maturity that Twin is talking about. Like, let's be equally yoked. Let me have my own apartment and you have your own apartment. And then we come together, you know? So I think it's something to be said about that because you don't want to think that it's okay to go live with a woman. I'm also not buying into that. No, no, it's it's never okay to actually, you know, live with a woman. But I li- I like his statement. I like the point that he made. If you are going to move in with a woman, have a purpose. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? have a plan. plan and don't let it define you. Yeah, that's why I said exactly. I agree somewhat. But yeah, yeah. You know, so fellas, I mean, like the, okay. Yeah, as I said earlier in the conversation, no, I do not agree. You should never ever move in a woman's house with name on the lease. But situation does happen. And I, like I said, I did that and one point. if you want to so move with a woman, let me just say this. If you have to move in with a woman, then at least, like Twin said, have the plan and also come with that security deposit. <laughs> okay? Because you're moving <laughs> into an established situation and it needs to be respected because you can leave at any moment. So just coming in and saying, I'm a 50-50, you know. What, what about the fact that I've already established this home? There's a couch for you to sit on. And have your beer or whatever, play your video, whatever it is you do. There's I a, agree. There's a refrigerator. There's a stove. I agree. You, you know, so I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, you know, it. I agree. No, Romeo, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm telling her she need, she would have to curb her expectations on the result. 
right? Like just just because you think you're teaching your your, your kid a lesson. Prime example, right? Like you, you somebody somebody in your family. Better example. My friend comes to me. He asked me to borrow money, right? Yo, I, I fucked up on a couple bills. I need to borrow some money. Mind you, he's a grown man, right? I'm trying to talk fast so I can get it out. He's a grown man, right? And I say to him, listen, bro. You got to figure that shit out on your own, right? Like, he should be able to understand this concept, but he doesn't. You should, you got to figure that shit out on your own, bro. Like, like, I have nothing to do with that, right? Like, so you would hope that he would say, damn, he right, man. I am grown. I need to figure out my own way. I need to learn how to fish and not try to, you know what I'm saying, have somebody g give me fish, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you would think that would be the thing, right? But instead, he's saying, no, fuck you, nigga. I needed the money at the time. La, 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 la. I'm just... I I'm saying you need to curb your expectations of them understanding the concept. That's all I'm saying. Mm. He's another one that th they're not getting through to these guys. <laughs> these guys ain't trying to hear. They ain't trying to hear responsibility and accountability, bro. They're not. What, what's, what's is understandable? I mean, everyone's not going to receive the message, right? Yeah, everybody alarm clock does go off at different times. I get it. Right. But, I mean, at least at this point, if the man can't do their part, that it's up to the woman to be accountable as well because at the end of the day, it's still her apartment she's letting people in. So if you don't take accountability, you can't be crying wolf later on once you move the dude in, let him get comfortable and do whatever you're doing all this time. That's why we saying if he coming yeah. in, y'all love each other like that, you know, but make sure he coming in with that mindset to have a plan. Okay, you going to come in and how are you going to benefit this established home? What are you going to do to relieve the pressures and the weight on my shoulders as a woman, right? And in addition to that, how you coming? Are you coming prepared to pay this security deposit and first month rent that I had to pay? To pay that deposit on that furniture? Or, you know, to pay off? For, how are you coming? And that, that position and posture you take coming in will determine how that woman responds to you. You won't have to ask to be on that lease. Your name will be on that lease so quick. Because she'll have security in that. She'll feel secure enough to do that. You won't have to worry about submission. She'll start submitting so quick because you just let her know that you're here for it. You, you're you ready. You, this is what you want. So, yeah, it makes a difference. And it Listen, can only I'll... come from a man. It can't come from that woman. No, I get that 100%. And listen, I've been in a situation before I even bowed down and did anything like that. I, I slept in the car. I slept in the car. I had a gym membership that was 24 hours, so I always had someone to take a shower and a little clean until I got on my feet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think once you've been through a struggle, if right. you happen to be in a situation, you're going to appreciate what you got, and you're going to bring everything you got to the table. I just want to say that real quick, but go ahead. Right. Sometimes you do got to go through a little bit of struggle to get the appreciation. Hold on. That is mind-blowing to me. Employees or not, you raise your child with the highest of expectations. My child shall not be raised with no expectations of maybe he's an employee. He might be. But while he's in my house, he will be pushed, spoken to, motivated, and put down a path of leadership, not follow. He's going to be put in position to be a boss, not an employee. Now, if he chooses his own path down the road, then so be it. But I would definitely put the milestones and the, and, and the bricks in front of him to take him to the highest point of the pyramid. Okay, Romeo. So, I, listen, I feel you on that. And, and I'll say this to anybody, to each his own. But let me give you a scenario that actually really happened. I had a father who raised his son. And his son, because the dad was, okay, a father raised his son. The father was a high school superstar football player, X, Y, Z, right? His son didn't really want to play football, but his dad made him force him to do it because he lived under his house and he didn't listen to his rules. So the boy played football because not because he wanted to, because he was forced to. Then on top of that, he had the stress of trying to live up to his dad's name. The more the story is, them two ended up falling out. They had a bad relationship because his dad never actually listened to him and understand what he, what he wanted to do. And they have a, 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 a rocky relationship over the years. They're okay, but it's still rocky. It's because I understand, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. You know what I'm saying? You want to make sure your son is a leader, is a boss. I agree. That's why I said expose him to everything. But in the day, I don't want to do something my son don't want to do. If my son, like, listen, I want my son to play basketball, but I'm not going to force him to play basketball. If you don't play a day, I don't play soccer. You want to play soccer? Okay, he'll be the best soccer player in the world. But I'll never force my kid to do something. Because I don't want that resentment later on down the line, which I've seen many times with fathers and sons.
That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, I think that the, di- the dynamics are slightly different in what you guys are saying, although I do believe that you guys are kind of saying Um, I think his point. Hold on, you breaking up? Give it a second. Hold on, catch that, catch that connection. If someone's calling. Tell them to call you back later. Hey, yeah, we still hear y'all. Her connection is reconnected. <laughs> Wait, there you go. gotta stop coming from my connection. You know, I'm in Miami right now. Okay, <laughs> I'm doing this <laughs> in Miami. So, um, what I was saying is I think that the dynamics are slightly different in, in the um, the approach of what you guys are, are referring to because if you're going to teach your kid, you want them to reach for the highest thing, the, the, the stars. And I think that you're saying the same thing, but you also want to take into consideration your child, period, their ambitions. Their their dreams, what they're you know what they kind of go towards. So at some point, your goal for them has to be put on pause, and you have to observe where they are and what they're leaning toward. And then your goal could still be for them to be the best of it, but it's not. It may not be the path that you would prefer them go. You know what I mean? To your point, okay, I want basketball, but if you want to play soccer. My goal is still that you're the best on whatever it is. It's just not the same sport. Well, that's the same thing with investment entrepreneurship. Okay, my goal is that you go for boss, you know, the boss level and be the CEO, you know, the COO, the CFO. But if that's not your thing, I have to take a step back. I'm not going to, because what you'll do is you'll degrade them. You'll devalue them if they don't move the way you want them to move. And they'll feel like they'll never, they'll never live up to your standard, and Facts. that's not what you want to do. That's not healthy. Mm-hmm. So yes, push them and you know groom them to aim for the stars, but then also be willing to take a step back and see where their stars lie, not your stars for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and press play. Yep. Listen, I do love the fact that he said, "Don't let what happened to you at 21 define who you are as a man." And, you know, but I just don't agree with the, yeah, you know, I had to live with a woman. It happens. Sure, of course it happens. But I'm just saying, you, you, to me, this is me, and this is not, no disrespect to him. This is how I feel. I am a wolf, right? I, I get shit done, and no matter the circumstance, you can pick me up and drop me off in fucking Afghanistan, right? I'm going to get shit done. That's just the way I operate, right? I have the ultimate confidence in what I do in any, in any space, Right. I would me personally and there's no disrespect to him once again. I would never let that happen. And it's never happened. I would never settle for that. Right. Like there's always an option. You, you don't have to go live with that woman. You could have figured something else out once again. And I want to make it seem like I'm judging him because I'm not. I don't know this. Man. I'm just saying there's always another option. Oh, yeah. No problem. No, it's no, it's no judge. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown because I, I explained it earlier in the, in the show. What happened was me and my wife, well, before my wife, um, I had my own apartment. She had her own apartment. Her lease was up first. So she got another apartment, which is much bigger. Then I moved in with her. That was my, that was my scenario. So that's why I say that. So that's all. <laughs> but word, I agree with him because you don't mm-hmm. have to move in with a woman. What happened to you hitting your mans? And I'm like, look, bro, we need to put our coins together and we need to go get this spot. It don't have to be luxurious. It don't have to be all big. And it could be a studio. We're going to save up. See, that's the vision. That's the goal. The goal is not for you to live with no woman and just be okay with that. The goal is to understand adulting and being responsible. Which in our culture, especially in tri-state area, you got a lot of single women raising these single men. And they don't understand the mommy damage. They don't understand the daddy scars. They don't even understand that they're operating from these places. So, you know, certain things are okay with them. Certain things are the way they're supposed to be. You get what I'm saying? And, and not necessarily the way it should work. It doesn't benefit us as a people. Like, okay, let's just say if you're in an isolated situation and that worked, you know, it worked out. But overall, did you marry that woman? No. So how did it help us? You know what I mean? So it, it just goes to the cycle. Let's break the cycle. That's what we're talking about. Solutions 
to break any cycles, bro. I'm going to quit. Yeah. And, and, and I use this example all the time. Like, people who hate their jobs, and 90 fucking 5% of people hate their jobs. And I always say to them, hey, won't you just go get a job that you like doing? Or find another job. And they always say to me, oh, well, it's not that simple. It's not that easy. And I say, sure it is. Do you have kids? They go, yeah. Hey, if I tell you I'm going to kill your kid... If you don't get another job that you like in two weeks, guess what? You wouldn't fucking sleep until you found that job, right? Like, you, you just need to apply the same energy that you would apply in that motivated circumstance to everything else in your life. Like, so so the idea that, oh, fuck it, you know, I got caught up in some shit, I had to do this. Like, no. If you applied the urgency and the fire that you needed to do to, 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 protect, to keep your kids alive, in every scenario, everything will work out for you every... Fucking time, I promise you. Ron Jay, you speaking facts there, my brother? Speaking facts. facts. On, he's speaking facts on facts. <laughs> on facts. I mean, but see, the problem is these these young men are not getting that message that you're telling right now. They're not hearing that because if they hear what you're saying, they wouldn't like have said, an attitude. First of all, well, they have attitude. I mean, listen, the truth always going to hurt. It's always going to sting. Uh -huh. but, but but what he's saying is true. As a Absolutely. man, you need to be. You, you need to be that wolf. You need to be that lion. You need to be that lady. So and listen, you're not, you're not gonna sell for women, anything. The women are going to see that, Ron J, and you would be the one that the woman's like, "Look, babe, you, I see you. You're a go getter. Th this will make more sense." So now she's going to come to you with what makes more sense. All right, look, those that are on the system or whatever, I, right, I'll get this rental benefit thing. We only got to pay this much. If you come over here, we gonna build. We gonna go. But it's still like twin always say, make sure it's intentional. You know, have a have a purpose if you're gonna be with somebody. But that's the energy that a lot of women are looking for. Like, with or without me, are you gonna go get it? Or are you gonna fold? And these dudes are folding, they're going back to their mama's house. Facts. That's what I'm talking. That's a different energy. Like, come on. All right, so you can't stay with me. That means what? You going back to your mom? You think I'm going to be attracted to you then? Like, you left your mama house to come stay with me. It didn't work out all the way. Now you going back to your mom's house? I'm not off it. Nope. Nah. Because <laughs> yeah, you're not cause... even pushing. You're not <laughs> right. Thinking. That's not That's not it. And you thinking, okay, now you're going to go use your mom. That's all you're and, doing. Right. And, it, and all that's going to make you like a mama's boy. And in time, yeah. that means you get an argument. What you going to do? Run back home Reverse, to your mama. You going to fold. You going to keep folding. And then looking like, oh, you want me to do this? You want me? You darn right. But even if you weren't with me, don't you got to do this anyway? Facts. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and press play. Okay, Ron. Ron, Jay, I actually disagree with you. Just uh, you, I understand what you're saying, but I just feel like I'm, you need to do the opposite. These kids are very smart. These kids are very, very smart, and you need to treat them as such. Do not baby them. Do not treat them like they don't know what's going on. And if they don't know what's going on, if their mind cannot completely grasp it, what you're really doing is planting a seed so that when the mind is old enough to understand, it can then blossom. A lot of things that we teach our kids and we implement into our kids is not for today. It's for tomorrow. It's for when they're 20. It's for when they're older. So a lot of the things that we do teach them, they don't understand. And that's the part you need to understand. I, I, I'm a, I, I understand you, but I think, you, I think you're not giving these kids the benefit of the doubt. They're, that's, they're, they're very smart, and they know what's going on. These kids are smart, but they're also very lazy. I mean, I understand what both y'all are saying. Both y'all making some valid points, but... We still, we have to, it's a requirement that these young men are educated and know what they need to present themselves in the real world. And sometimes the doggy dog world is real. No one's going to care about your feelings. <laughs> right. Not none of these women. Not none of us women. We don't care about how you feel. We over it. We tired. We don't want to keep doing this by ourselves. So we definitely are not here to coddle you. And listen, I, I, I keep saying this. I'm a twin. Me and my twin got the same information at the same time. Same information, same time. One went left, one went right. So you can pour by so much information to your kids. But when they get to a certain age, it's called choices and decision and accountability. And you can hit play. Right. 
That's right. So you 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 don't. When I say entrepreneur, it doesn't mean that you have to literally make him an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship, I was more referring to as a mindset, a boss, a leader, and I because I believe that my child is going to pick up what he sees in the house. I believe that when my child sees an ambitious mother, an ambitious father, um, it is natural for them to say, well, I want to do that. I want to be like my parents because we are their first role models. Facts. It's a lot harder to raise a child um, with, no, with no work ethics if you didn't have any to show. But when you have a boatload of work ethics, statistically and number wise and just for me rationally the child is going to pick those type of things up and that's what you're looking to drop off on the child that's what that's a seed you're looking to plant it can be in any sport yes listen Remy is hitting on point and real quick the reason why he hitting on point because i grew up with my mom and my dad i see what black love looks like i see it firsthand the ups and downs the good and bad but i've seen it so when I hit the world and I was, you know, running the streets per se, whatever, and when I dated, I dated with a purpose. But it also add to that, I wanted to be married. Like there's some people there who don't want to be married. I wanted to be married. So every time I dated female, it was like literally long term. Listen, I'm in for the long run for a relationship. Just because I seen that. I had a conversation with other men. They didn't see a man and a woman together, so they don't know what a marriage looks like. So but you the, the point I'm trying to make is that however your kids see you, they gonna marry it. You know, they're going to look married. So, yes, on top of me working, I'm also an entrepreneur. My kids' son see everything I do. So I'm hopefully them watching me. They take so many skill sets and apply to their life. Preach. You better preach, twin. <laughs> you want to add anything to that? Miss Big Life? You better preach. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can okay, hear you. I'm back here like, you better preach. <laughs> no, I'm saying, but it, 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 he's right though. What he was saying, it, your kids are always watching. So ladies and gentlemen who's listening, regardless of your situation is happening, if you have a son, if you have a daughter, married, not married, single, whatever case may be, your kids is always watching you. And based on your actions, whatever they see, they're going to believe it because... You're the mother. The kids always have trust in you. So if you have a daughter and she see multiple men come in and out of the house, she gonna think that's okay. If if you have a son and he see you going over girls' house all the time, when you have another girl or you have a wife, they gonna think okay, cheating's okay. My dad did it. Those are the things you know. You can sit and tell them, hey, don't do what I do. You know what I'm saying? How does saying go? Don't do what I say or do what I do. Whatever the case may be. Long story short, they're watching you. And when they watch you, they will duplicate those things because that's what they know until they get out in the world world and they find out it's wrong thing they've been taught. And that's how they get messed up. You better go ahead and tell it because they're going to do what you show them to do. They can care less what your mouth say. Your mouth can talk all day, every day. But if you don't show them nothing, they can do nothing. That's, that, that's on love. That's on facts. That's everything. That whole do what I say, not what I do, that junk went out the door years, years ago. Right. Oh, the connection's going out again. But I think we're all caught up on the cup, on all the um, notes conversation that people have chimed in. And I want to say thanks for everyone who, who chimed in. I love the healthy dialogue, the good conversation. Um, I love everybody's their facts and their thoughts. I love it all.